Congressman Fernandez. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since the issue today uh, pertains to uh, AJK and the uh, Pogo issue, I will um, uh, defer the, uh, my opening remarks uh, considering that um, Chairman Abante already uh, took my time. So uh, to expedite the uh, proper discussion, uh, Mr. Chairman, since one pa po, alauna pa naman po yung Pogo, so uh, I will be submitting my opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Dan Fernandez, for being considerate to the committee. Chairman uh, Paduano, you're recognized. Uh, same with me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think uh, the manifestation made by uh, Chairman Dan echoes this representation. And I do not know if uh, Chairman Dan has prepared these uh, opening remarks. I hope so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, he seems to have a 25-page <laughs> opening remarks for today's committee hearing, uh, Chairman Paduano. So I recognize my co-chair, the chairman of the Committee on Human Rights, Congressman Benny Abante. You are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To my colleagues and fellow members of the committee, our resource persons and guests, ladies and gentlemen, magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat. As we gather once again to continue this inquiry, we are reminded that the pursuit of justice and accountability requires not just perseverance, but also patience. Our mission is not without its challenges, yet we must persist. We have seen how resource persons have attempt, attempted to escape the responsibility of giving testimony. We have witnessed how others have tried to hide wrongdoing by being evasive and by being uncooperative with the Joint Committee. And today, we will see how, sooner or later, everyone will be held to account. Matagal na natin narinig ang kanila mga pangalan. Pero ngayon, Nandito si Ms. Cassandra Ong. It is this representation's hope that they will be truthful and contribute to our understanding of the many issues we have unearthed during our hearings. In our ongoing inquiry, we have examined the many issues surrounding POGOS, illegal drugs, and extrajudicial killings. At first glance, this may seem like separate issues with their respective complexities and challenges. However, as we have learned, they are deeply interconnected, driven by the same vices that lead to a cascade of suffering, corruption, and injustice. Pogos and illegal drugs are not just crimes of convenience or profit. They are part of a broader network of vices that entangle and ensnare individuals, families, and even institutions. Gambling is often labeled a harmless vice, a form of entertainment that harms no one but the participant. To me, all forms of gambling are social ills that must not be allowed to persist. But we must ask ourselves, after all our hearings, is it truly harmless when it leads to addiction, when it breeds environments ripe for illegal activity, and when it fuels a cycle of corruption and violence? Nakita natin, hindi totoo na walang nasasaktan, maraming apektado. It is becoming increasingly clear that the operations of POGOS and the illegal drug trade go hand in hand with criminal activities designed to protect their interests. We have seen how the lure of quick money can corrupt the hearts of individuals, even our leaders, leading them to make choices that endanger our society. What may start as a seemingly minor vice can quickly escalate into something far more dangerous impacting the integrity of our institutions and the safety of our communities. A small fire can be a conflagration 
and can be very destructive. The Bible warns us about the corrupting nature of evil. Most of us are familiar with what is written in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 10. And I quote, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. End of quote. This passage shows how the pursuit of money, unchecked and unguided by moral principles, can lead people away from righteousness and into the embrace of wrongdoings. The evil of gambling and drugs cannot be separated from the violence and injustices our country has experienced, such as extrajudicial killings. These are not isolated phenomena. They are part of a larger cycle of corruption that corrupts and can even influence those who are supposed to protect and serve. This is why our hearings are vital. They are not merely about uncovering facts. They are about exposing how deep and widespread these problems are and how they have infiltrated parts of our bureaucracy. As public servants and as citizens, we have a duty to confront these evils. We must not turn a blind eye or dismiss them as problems too large to solve. The Quad Committee is committed to holding accountable those who perpetuate the cycles of vice and violence. But we cannot do it alone. We need the public's understanding, support, and vigilance. After all, we are foot soldiers in this hallowed institution. In this critical moment, I turn to the wisdom of the scripture to guide us. The Apostle Paul himself, a very good lawyer, writing in his epistle to the Romans, provides words that resonate deeply with our purpose. Romans 12, 21 states, and I quote, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. End of quote. This passage reminds us to stand firm against wrongdoing and to actively do good even in the face of temptation. As we have seen in our ongoing inquiry, we are dealing with issues that have caused immense suffering fear and loss. The evil we confront in these hearings is not just in the actions of criminals, but also in the silence and indifference that have allowed such actions to go unchecked. It is our duty as the representative of the people to not only speak out against injustice, but to act against it. The Joint Committee's work is not just an administrative exercise, nor a political exercise. It is a collective effort to right wrongs, to hold accountable those who have perpetrated injustice, and to ensure that such actions are not repeated. This requires all of us to work together, to support one another, and to be steadfast in our commitment to justice. I urge all resource persons, public officials, and citizens to help us in this endeavor. When people come together to confront evil, when we choose to act justly and stand for what is right, we become a powerful force for good. Let us overcome the evil we face the arrogance, defiance of the law, not with words alone, but with meaningful action. Together, let us stand against vice and evil. Let us work to build a society where justice prevails, where the innocent are protected, and where our children and their children can grow up free from the dark shadows of vice, corruption, 
and violence. It is often said that evil thrives when the upright remain silent. Therefore, let us not be silent. Let us speak out and act guided by the principles of righteousness and justice. Maraming maraming salamat po. Thank you, uh, Chairman uh, Abante. At the uh, proper time, Mr. Chair, I will be making a motion to grant immunity to our witnesses. Police Colonel Joby Espinido yeah, yeah. and Police Colonel uh, Jimmy Fortalesa because they are vital witnesses and they will be telling us something that is quite important and necessary for us to know at the proper time, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chairman Abante. At the proper time, the committee will uh, rule on the motion uh, by uh, Chairman Abante on the issue of granting immunity to those who are eligible uh, to avail of the immunity uh, in their uh, uh, statements to be given before the squad committee. Uh, thank you, Chairman Abante. Uh, Congressman Fernandez. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, since the issue today uh, pertains to uh, AJK and the uh, POGO issue, I will uh, uh, defer the, uh, my opening remarks uh, considering that uh, Chairman Abante already uh, took my time. So uh, to expedite the uh, proper discussion, uh, Mr. Chairman, since one pa po, alauna pa naman po yung Pogo, so uh, I will be submitting my opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Chairman Dan Fernandez, for being considerate to the committee. Chairman uh, Paduano, you're recognized. Uh, same with me, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think uh, the manifestation made by uh, Chairman Dan echoes this representation. And I do not know if uh, Chairman Dan has prepared these uh, opening remarks. I hope so. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, he seems to have a 25-page <laughs> opening remarks for today's committee hearing, uh, Chairman Paduano. So thank you again uh, for being considerate to the committee.